Well, good morning and welcome to another episode of Ian Smithson's Photography. This morning I'm at Kirk Point, just outside the Western Treatment Plant near Werribee in Victoria. The Western Treatment Plant is the main sewerage plant for the city of Melbourne, but it's also a mecca for birds, particularly migratory wading birds. We're right at the end of the migratory wading season at the moment. The birds are due to fly off back to Siberia and Alaska sometime in the next few weeks. So I'm sitting here on the shore watching redneck stints and curlew sandpipers only about 10 or 15 metres away from me and they're perfectly happy sitting here. There's a lot of noise as you can hear with the waves and the gulls and the terns and the ravens behind me. There are also ducks out on the shore here, uh, swans a little bit further out and a couple of pelicans flying around. But I'm going to take some shots and some video of these beautiful little birds we're fortunate at the moment that unusually for this time of the year in this location we have an easterly wind and that means that the birds are facing into the wind as they always do when they're roosting so they have an easy takeoff but that also means they're facing into the sun so we get the beautiful glow of the sunlight on their faces and on the white breasts so there's a bit too much action happening right now so I'm going to turn off the GoPro and get onto the camera and start shooting these birds. They're getting much closer and closer as the tide is coming in. They're starting to feed uh, at the edge of the water and the rocks that they've been roosting on are starting to get washed over with waves so they keep moving closer into shore. A uh, bit of a hint if you're looking to come and photograph wading birds and shore birds is to come on a rising tide Get yourself set up somewhere and then just sit there and wait for the tide to bring the birds to you. They will follow the tide up if they're feeding, but even if they're roosting, they don't like having their bellies wet, so they'll keep moving up the shore and get closer and closer to you. And providing you're quiet and relatively still, they'll put up with quite a lot. All right, enough talking, get on with some shooting. I arrived about half an hour before sunrise and the birds were roosting quietly on the rocks near the shore. As the sun rose over the horizon, the light passing through the smoke haze from recent bushfires bathed these redneck stints with a beautiful orange glow. The neighbours dropped in for a morning chat creating some short term chaos and even the smallest disturbance creates a mass takeoff but the birds quickly return to shore and continue their morning ritual. Some feeding. Others just hanging about. And others still dozing in the morning sun. Interestingly, many of the curlew sandpipers, the larger of the two species here, were displaying breeding plumage with the red coloured breasts and darker, more distinct colour patterns on the back and wings. One of the things that I'm also interested in doing today is testing out the tracking focus with this new camera. It was one of the things that attracted me to the Micro Four Thirds with the ability to use stabilisation in both the lens and the camera and the focusing systems to see if I can get better tracking of birds in flight than I could get with a much larger lens and frankly the slower and less than adequate tracking on the Pentax K1 and K3. So I'm going to be trying to shoot some birds in flight to see how well the camera maintains focus between shots. This is a glorious little spot here, even with me standing here talking to you. The birds are only 10 or 15 metres away from me here, perfectly happy roosting. There's more and more activity now with cormorants out there on the rocks as well. More gulls, more terns. 
as the tide is coming in, some of their roosting points have been flooded by the incoming tide, so they're getting closer and closer to shore and giving me more opportunities to shoot. So I'm going to give it a crack. been a great day birding. I'm just sitting down here on the ford across the Little River, still in the Western Treatment Plant. There's been talk today of people seeing a Lewins rail. I've never photographed a Lewins rail before, I've seen a few, but they're quite rare and so I'm going to sit here for a while. As the sun dips down, it's now late afternoon, about half past four, and see whether this bird comes out or not. So, go away, fly. So, a few words on shooting birds all day with this camera. Firstly, it's light and it's portable and it's easy to use. It's a pleasure to walk around with. It's not too heavy. Uh, it's not too cumbersome. Uh, I can walk around holding it quite easily. Uh, my old arthritic fingers used to uh, have a bit of a problem carrying a heavy camera around all day. I don't need to have it on a strap, but the lens is so light that if I wanted to, I could just have a normal camera strap on, and that would be enough. Um, I do have a shoulder strap as well, and I'll try that out uh, on another day, but I didn't try it today. I was just hand-holding everything. The stabilisation in it is just fantastic, even shooting video. The ability to hand-hold a telephoto lens, shooting video, and keep it reasonably still uh, is fantastic. The stabilisation at long telephoto uh, when you're shooting a bird that's sitting on a branch a fair way away and you're trying to hold it very still seems to work very well. And the focus tracking in it is much better than I'm used to on the Pentax. I tried a number of different focusing techniques on this camera. There are several, but the one that I think works well is to pre-select the focal points that you want to use. And you can use this little thumb thingy here to, uh, to move the focal points around. For birds in flight, I tried using uh, about half the focal points in the middle uh, with enough range across the screen to keep the bird relatively close to the middle and be able to track it through, directly through the viewfinder. And that seems to have worked. I haven't yet looked at these uh, on the screen, obviously. I've looked at them through the viewfinder uh, and they look okay, but it remains to be seen how sharp they are. Uh, but through the viewfinder, it looks like the tracking has kept the bird in focus very well, uh, despite my inability to uh, keep up with the movement of the bird at 800 millimetres, they move across the screen very quickly. This is what the custom multifocal point screen looks like in the viewfinder with the central 37 of 255 focus points selected. You can shrink or enlarge this selection and move it around the screen to suit your composition. While this isn't the greatest shot as the bird is too far away, the following 28 shot sequence demonstrates that once the camera grabs focus, it maintains that focus throughout the entire sequence despite me being unable to keep the fast flying bird in the centre of the screen while panning handheld. First in real time at 10 frames per second and then I'll slow it down a little bit so that you can see the focus on the bird a little better. It's been a great day. I'm going to stay here for a little bit longer and see if this bird comes out. But if you've enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe, click the little bell, tell your friends, share it, do all those things. But remember, pixels are free, so get out there and shoot more. Bye for now.